Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Before I get started today, I do want to mention that I did actually just create a Patreon. If you are interested, it will be linked down below. Um, it's just a place for me to post some like extra content and stuff like that. And if you're looking for more from me, it's a way that you can help support me. But if not, no big deal. It's totally fine, but just thought I'd mention it. So I have not posted a wrap up in quite a while. I've frankly been a har horrible, like horrible, horrible doing wrap ups this year. I did the last wrap up I did was like my recent reads video where I was trying to catch up and I just don't know if I'll be like caught up ever. So I'm just kind of gonna move, move along. And today I'm gonna wrap up all the books that I read this fall. So everything that I read in September through now. And I just haven't done a wrap up in a while. I just wanna talk about these books. Definitely the pace is a lot slower than it's been in years past. I've kind of touched upon this like in all the videos that I've been making recently, but I don't like feel bad about it because we should make ourselves feel bad about the amount that we read just as long as we are having fun and enjoying the books that we are reading and the hobby of reading. That's my personal philosophy. And so I'm here to talk about the books that I read September to December. I'm filming this on December 21st, the winter solstice, Keeley's birthday, and uh, what better day to do a fall wrap up than the first day of winter. So starting off my September reads, I started with The Damned by Renee Audier, and this is a sequel to The Beautiful. The Beautiful follows Celine Rossio as she flees from France to New Orleans in the 1870s and when she is there she basically finds herself involved with the Le Corps de Lyons which is run by their enigmatic leader Sebastian Saint Germain and they seem to have this like forbidden pull to one another and they can't resist but there are deeper things at play and a when a murder that is stalking the city attempts to murder Celine, she must work with the courts to figure out what is at the bottom of this situation. Now, this is a vampire book, but the first book was very, very subtly vampires. And it ended on a trope cliffhanger that I am not always a fan of. And that definitely affected my enjoyment of the second book. Now, the second book, The Damned, I ended up giving two stars which is really surprising to me because the first book was a five star like typically if the first book is a five star the other books in the series are going to be five stars or at least like be rated but two star is really rare for me like i am kind of known for not rating books very harshly but um i couldn't do i couldn't do it with this one there was a very big tonal shift in this book compared to the first book and the first thing that really took away from my enjoyment of the book is the fact that we do not have Celine in the first like 30% of the book and the whole time that I was starting the book I'm like where is Celine where is she like come on we gotta get my homegirl back in the story because she was the thing that really made the first book for me and the other thing is I felt like we focused less on this like vampire New Orleans setting and that again was another big draw of the first book for me and one of the reasons that I loved it so much and we did get a lot of the lore so I know that the common complaint with the beautiful is that there was not enough lore. So we got plenty of lore but it just like didn't keep that New Orleans magic and I just felt like very displaced in the second book. It just... It was just really disappointing to me because it did not have that same magic, that same feeling of the first book. The characters felt a little different. Like, it was just weird. It didn't quite work in my opinion. And so I ended up having to only give this one two stars, which is just uh, so sad because I really had such high expectations. The next book that I read is Yona of the Dawn, volume five by Mizuho. Kusanagi and this is a manga that I have been slowly reading throughout the course of the year and I just adore this series so much. I did ask my mom for more volumes of these for Christmas so that I, continue, I can continue on with the series. So so excited about that and I definitely feel like I will hopefully be reading more manga in my future but Yona of the Dawn is the story of Yona who is a young 16 year old princess when all of a sudden her father is murdered by the enemies to their kingdom and she must flee with her bodyguard hack who is this guy back here and it's basically like their journey to win back her kingdom and everything that they go through and i just I freaking adore this because i love yona's character development even though i really am just scratching the surface of it and really just starting to see her change because this is only volume five of like 
20 something you can really see her starting to come out of her shell and trying to be there for herself instead of having to rely on everyone and right now they're like on a journey to find the like dragons that will protect her it's like this ancient thing in their kingdom and so like i just like adore all these characters and the main ship in this like i freaking like i love hack i love hack and apparently there is a anime i've actually never watched an anime which i really need to do because i am starting to read more manga and um i just need to figure out it's only one season so i need to figure out what volume it covers up to and then after that i will be watching the anime and i'm so so excited about that because it's just something new for me and i adore 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 this series so of course this was five stars and i can't wait to continue on so the next book that i have here is <laughs> from blood nash by jennifer l armandrout i have not stopped speaking about this book since i picked it up because i i love it so much it's one of my new favorite books one of my new favorite series like everything about it is just chef's kiss chef's kiss perfect amazing beautiful wonderful just everything that i ever wanted in a book is in this book it's in this book so <laughs> I just okay but what is it about you may ask well Oh, also a side note, apparently they sell the hardcovers at Barnes and Nobles. So. Might need to get on that. So there is a maiden that was chosen from birth to usher in a new era. And so Poppy's life has really never been her own. The life of a maiden is very solitary. She can speak to no one. No one can look at her. She has to wear like a veil, like no one can speak to her. And she can of course never experience pleasure as she is the maiden and is supposed to remain a pure. And she's waiting for the day of her ascension and is kind of just sitting around like as this little puppet. But she would rather be with the guards fighting to protect her kingdom and the people that she loves. However, she's never had this choice. The choice has been taken away from her. And so enter Hawk, a golden-eyed guard honor bound to assure Poppy's ascension and he basically makes her question every single thing that she's ever believed and destiny and duty become tangled with desire and need and also there is a kingdom that is forsaken by the gods and feared by the mortals and it's rising once more determined to take back what they believe is theirs and so as the shadow of those cursed grow stronger there are more attacks on the kingdom and the line between what is forbidden and what is right becomes blurred like they're like like I need to give this like five million stars because Poppy's character development is just amazing. You have this girl that is put in this position where she is revered, but she can't live normally, right? Like she she has to wear a veil anywhere that she goes. She has to like she can't speak to anyone normally. She can't she can't she's being like very, very controlled. And she has these guards around her at all times and like that is not who she is as a person like she wants love like she wants pleasure she doesn't understand why she was chosen by the maiden and what makes her so special that they have to ensure her her ascension in this way and that they're controlling her in this way and i thought that this book did a very very good job on being sex positive wherein it had this whole concept of the maiden and used virginity as a concept how it's used to control women but was very sex positive in the way that like it was all about choice and choosing and when you want to choose so yeah i just wanted to highlight that that was like done really well in this book and Pop's character i can't even i don't even know where to start on the romance because like i don't know anyone else who can write romantic tension like jennifer l armantrout like this oh my like oh my god like i I can't speak what I think about their relationship. <laughs> There's just like the. <laughs> it, this book is definitely like 18 plus. Um, it is new adult. It does get graphic, but like, it's it's so good. Like I have not seen fantasy smut done like this before, and I freaking loved it. So like, I just. <laughs> I, I could keep talking for hours, but you know, I have to move on to the next book, which thankfully is the sequel, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, which again, I can keep talking about these characters. Okay, so in this one, I don't even want to say the plot summary because like it's the sequel, the first one's on a big cliffhanger, and this one literally picks up right from the moment that the first one ends, which I always appreciate. And this is... 
Poppy and Hawk and more of their story as they are adventuring and that's, that's all I will say on that but like the way the romance developed in this and it's like they don't know if they can trust one another and like there's some tropes in here, some romance tropes that like are used in new and inventive ways. My heart, my heart, but like beyond the romance and all of that, like there is such an interesting magic system and world building system used here because I loved the concept of ascension and like what it actually means. And I will say that this series combines things that would normally seen in, be seen in an urban paranormal romance and put them in like a high fantasy setting and it, the payoff is just amazing. It works so well. Like please, please, please read these books because I'm just, I'm so obsessed. Um, did I mention that this one was five stars or like was that too obvious? So after reading those two books, I was inspired to continue reading Miss Jennifer L. Ormantrout's works because I'm obsessed with her. She's definitely now one of my new favorite authors. She's amazing. So the next book that I read is Wicked, which I read on my Kindle, and this is a new adult fairy hunter book from her. And in Wicked, we follow Ivy Morgan, who is not your typical 22-year-old college student. She is part of the order in ancient society that is dedicated to hunting down the fae in this world and killing them, which will essentially send them back to their own realm. Four years ago, she basically lost everything to the hands of the creatures that she has been sworn to hunt down, and so her life has been dedicated to hunting and killing these creatures. The last thing that Ivy expects in her life is one Ren, who is 6'3", green eyes, super handsome guy in the order, but he seems like he is also hiding some secrets. Ivy is really hesitant to let someone in, especially after the boy she loved was murdered by the Fae, but as her, the sparks between her and Ren ignite, she realizes that she needs more than just her duties in life. However, the secrets on both sides threaten to shatter the fragile bonds that have been formed between the two of them. So this was a Fae Hunter book. I liked it because usually Fae books are more about the like Fae and not the Hunter side. So I thought that was kind of interesting that we were focusing on that. And in this one there is more of like, like there's just like an increase in attacks and we have these two Fae Hunters that are kind of like, you know, bonding together to hunt down the site and figure out what's going on and I ended up giving this one four stars I thought it was a really solid new adult fantasy book paranormal Roman fan urban fantasy again Miss Jennifer L. Armitrout she never misses I just adore her my favorite favorite is this side character named Tank who is this brownie and like he lives with Ivy because she rescued him and she's like not supposed to have a brownie because it's like He's like a fairy creature, but he's just like this chill dude that lives in her apartment and uses her Netflix account and orders everything from Amazon Prime. So every day Ivy comes home and there's just Amazon Prime boxes everywhere. And I'm like, wow, like, is this my house? Because same dude. The romance between Ren and Ivy was done really, really well. I enjoyed the tension between them and the mystery of not really knowing Ren's past and his true reasons for coming to New Orleans because the order is a really tight knit community. And it was just really solid. It definitely like led up to more tension and things like that. And so I gave it four stars. And then that leads up to the next book in the trilogy, which is Torn. And you know, there's there's some problems in paradise between Ren and Ivy, and they need to kind of like I I don't know how to say the, the plot summary without spoiling the first book. So anyways, it's just it's the sequel, and you know, there's some more stuff going on with the Fae. The ante is up a little bit. We learned some secrets about the first characters that were revealed in the first book, and now Ren and Ivy must learn how to heal their relationship. Um, and this one I also did give four stars. Again, I just felt like it was a really perfect continuation of the first book. We learned more about the Fae and their intentions with, you know, the human world and more about the Order and the secrets that they're keeping. And we kind of see that both sides is neither as black and white as we thought it was. And again, I just adored Ren and Ivy's relationship. I thought that it was a really good portrayal of like two characters that are both badass and like can respect one another because, you know, Ivy can is capable of looking out for herself. Yeah, so this is a series that I really liked and I have yet to read the third book. That is kind of one of the books that I want to wrap up before the end of the year. I have some things that I'm reading and I'm kind of like all over the place, which doesn't usually happen with me. Usually I'm like pretty good at just like reading, 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 but I don't know, life kind of got all over the place. So that is a book that <laughs> Hopefully I will read before the end of the year, but I am filming this video on December 21st, so I still have like 
10 days to finish off some books so we'll we'll see what i can do and maybe i'll include those in my january wrap up but yes so after i read those two books by jennifer l armature i continued on my jla spree and i read the lux series starting with this book beginnings which is both obsidian and onyx lux follows katie who moves to a small town in west virginia and there's this neighbor that she has named Damon and he's like super hot but there's something off about him and he like wants nothing to do with her. He doesn't want Katie to be friends with his sister Dee and wants, um, but when a stranger attacks her and Damon and he basically freezes time with the wave of his hand, he, some of his alien signature energy rubs off on Katie and now they must like spend time together so that he can protect her until his energy signature wears off from there and this is probably one of the only alien YA books that I've read but it was so good I gave the first book in this series obsidian five stars because I was just so sucked into this book I wanted to know what was going to happen I love the romance between Katie and Damon as well as the friendships between Katie and Dee and I mean of course Katie is a book blogger that loves YA books and she has a little blog where she like posts reviews and I mean I have a booktube not a blog and my name is IE not why but like I feel like we're still pretty similar you know they were really good like enemies to lovers because like he was such an asshole and then we found the soft boy underneath like just such like great 2012 era YA and I'm trash for it I love it and of course that's why this series is a staple here in booktube um second book onyx I think I gave four stars to as well as the third book opal and I um do need to continue on with this book I have the the other there's like two more books so it's five books total and then a like spin-off book that is also in the next bind up um, and I do have a Lux series vlog coming out soon that should actually be up soon like I have been saying it for a while but like it will actually be up soon the footage um, where I read through these for the first time I have like my first in my JLA vlog series up on my channel now. That's where I read from Blood and Ash and Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. And so yeah, this is the next one in that series, but I kind of have been distracted by life, haven't gotten it completely up yet. And so it's coming. And it's coming though, friends. So you can you can count on that content in the future. And then in the new year I will be picking these back up as well as some of JLA's other books that I already own because trash for JLA. And continue on from there but yeah so i don't want to give too many of my thoughts because you can see my live reactions as i vlog while i read these up on my channel soon okay so the next book that i read is my reread of a court of thorns and roses by sarah j mass i mean of course this is one of my favorite series of all time we follow pharaoh who is a 19 year old huntress and when she accidentally kills a fae in the form of the wolf she is brought to the fairy lands um in exchange a life for a life but once there her feelings for tamlin the fairy that captured her turned from icy hostility to maybe something more and basically like there's an ancient wicked shadow over the land of the fae and pharaoh fuss find a way to stop it i mean this is one of my favorite series ever i have spoken extensively on this book i have a reading blog where i reread a court of thorns and roses and gave all my play-by-play -play thoughts so i will link that up above and down below so you can watch that there as well as a live show so i don't think i need to go into more detail because i have literally hours of content where i've spoken about this book in recent memory so please check those out if you are interested for more of course thorns and roses content but just know i love akotar i'm sarah jmash trash next up i read fortuna swarm by kj sunton and this is a book that i picked up because after i read from blood and ash i was really looking for some more fantasy romance and this seemed like one that was really popular I read it in my kindle loves it so much i purchased the physical copy um so the tagline for this one is we were meant to be seductive we were designed to lure humans in and so fortuna sworn is the last of her kind she is a nightmare a kind of fallen creature as they call them which has the ability to touch a human and know their greatest fears and be able to weave nightmares and illusions based off of those fears and 
they're super powerful, they're super feared. Um, however, Fortuna Sworn is left all alone after her parents were killed and her brother disappeared at two years ago. And so now she lives alone and she just hides among the humans working at a diner during the day and at night searching for her brother. After she is kidnapped by some goblins and led to a black market, she catches the eye of a powerful fairy who makes no attempt that he desires Fortuna and in exchange for her hand in marriage, he offers her some Something irresistible and so she journeys back into the land of the fallen creatures the fae and back into the the games of power and dynamics in these fairy courts and I loved it I loved it so much so much I gave it five stars I just think Fortuna is such a badass character because she has this ability that's really dark and like really powerful, right? Really, really powerful, really dark. Like you can weave these illusions, nightmares, like basically like literally creatures of your nightmares. And yet she still has this really soft and compassionate side and doesn't use her ability to just like get her way no matter what. Like she only really uses it in like situations where people are like in the wrong and she really, really has to because someone with that kind of ability I feel like can become so like powerful and corrupt like very easily but fortuna like really cares about people really cares about her brother and will do anything to save her brother and then of course we get into the fairy court that we are in the unseelie court and the power dynamics of the fae like they are like pretty traditional fae like they are conniving and cruel and they will kind of do whatever to get the way that they want and fortuna has to be really careful with like their riddles and their double meanings and not telling the truth and it's really just like so cool to see like how these two powerful types of creatures play against one another with their different powers strengths and weaknesses um as well as i love the relationship between caliph and fortuna because he's someone that seems one way on the outside and is another way kind of like in the soft moments with fortuna and there's a lot of push and pull with their relationship where they're kind of trying to get to know one another and like kind of circle around one another and is that like I wouldn't say like enemies to lovers, but they are like not always working towards the same goal and they have different motives. So they're kind of like almost like not like on the same page as one another. And like, I don't know, it's just like so interesting to see them come together through all of that. Just chef's kiss, wonderful, love it, obsessed. I still need to read the third book, but I might wait for the physical copy because that is out in February. This next one is Restless Slumber by KJ Sutton. I mean, just um, I again adored this i just think fortuna is such a badass and i loved seeing more of their adventuring and like again like the relationship between her and Kalith just took so many twists and turns in this book and the one thing i will say about like the pacing is like there's just always trauma going on like i'm always kept on my toes i'm always engaged when i'm reading these and like i loved it and i think that this is going to be a long term series so i can't wait and i think that there are going to be even though we have like our main couple already established i think there are like other love interests floating around and like i don't know like what direction it's going to go in but i think it could go in some really interesting and spicy places so yes oh and also not to mention this is a new adult book it is 18 plus so yes and that that's good you know the next book that i have to talk about is kingdom of the wicked by carrie maniscalco which is a new favorite of mine i mean carrie maniscalco is definitely an autobi author for me love her i adore the stalking jack the ripper series as you can see it's right here i also have the barnes noble edition of kingdom of the wicked they're just so beautiful all right so kingdom of the wicked what is it about well well let me tell you Amelia and her twin sister Vittoria are strege, which are witches that try to blend in with the humans and they live on the island of Sicily and it's not really made clear what time period but I would say sometime around like the 1800s. So they run a restaurant with their family however one night Vittoria doesn't show up to the dinner service and Amelia goes to investigate and she finds the desecrated dead body of her twin and she is of course devastated beyond belief she will stop at nothing to find her sister's killer even if it means using dark magic that has been forbidden then amelia meets wrath who is one of the wicked one of the princes of hell and he claims that he's on a mission from his master and their goals align but when it comes to the wicked nothing is as it seems 
okay five stars for this book i mean so so good i mean first of all the setting the sicilian setting like i felt transported to sicily in this like time period and i especially love that it took place in a restaurant because we got so so many descriptions of italian food and my mouth was watering while i was reading this i am not like italian myself but i think if you're someone that comes from a very italian family you will resonate very strongly with the experiences of this family because it does involve a lot of like italian and sicilian culture which i thought was really cool to see some of that um beyond that i love 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 the whole like aspect of witches and you know stalking jack the ripper series is pretty you know famous for its take on murder it's a, like a murder mystery why historical fantasy romance and this is like a murder mystery urban fantasy so i just love that genre bending that carrie maniscalco plays with and um okay so the tension between Amelia and Wrath, oh my goodness, because you just don't know if you can trust Wrath because he's a prince of hell. He is a prince of hell. And, but like Amelia and Wrath like kind of like form this bond as they are trying to solve the murders and they don't know if they can trust one another and then they're like, mm -mm, and then things happen and just Amelia's character is so good. The twist took me to places that I did not see and i really enjoyed learning more about this world and amelia's character like i sisterly bonds and books just sometimes get me sometimes and the fact that this book is about a girl that lost her twin sister and just like the devastation that she feels just like really really got to me like it was really hard to read at some points about when she's talking about like the fact that she had lost her sister and she just becomes so dead set on vengeance because she she needs you know like something to help her through grieving and oh oh my goodness and the way that it ended was such like a badass cliffhanger i cannot wait to see the next book because i think we are going to see it more of like the hell realm and more of the princes of hell and like i'm ready sign me up i want to go there i want to see what's going on let's follow our girl amelia see what she can do in hell because i think she is about to start some fires down there next i did a reread of king's bane followed by lightbringer by claire legrand and these are the second and third books in the furyborn trilogy furyborn um is about a prophecy about two queens one of blood one of light one that will bring about the end of the world and one that will save it so these two queens are the only ones that can harness the power of all seven elements so Riel is friends with the crown prince and when his life is endangered by assassins she publicly displays her ability to control all seven elements and thus she is put through trials to prove that she is the prophesied sun queen and not the blood queen a thousand years later eliana Farakora lives in the undying empire um she is a bounty hunter and thinks that keeps her safe from the horrors of the empire however when her mother is captured she joins up with the rebel forces to try and fight back against the evil of the empire so with my reread of king's bane it was five stars i'm really happy that i went back to reread the second novel to re-experience kind of like the middle of the important information that was in there and there's just some plot twists that really were so good so intense so emotional and pulled with the heartstrings and then of course the book that i adored is Lightbringer, which really just brought the whole story together so seamlessly. Of course, five stars again. This whole series is five stars to me. Literally one of my favorite fantasy trilogies, I think. Just so well done, so intricate. There's angels, there's time travel. There's so many elements that are woven together in such a like beautiful way. And you can tell that Claire Legrand really thought about this book and laid the groundwork for it to just make it all just come together so beautifully, so heartbreakingly. And of course you have the characters that you feel for and we have Riel and Eliana, these two really strong women that are not all good or all evil despite the world casting them in these two roles of the evil blood queen and the beautiful good sun queen. Like it's not just all one or the other. Um, and I think that this book really explores like being forced into those kinds of roles as well as like character redemption arcs and just, I don't know, just everything and like the whole the way that it ended actually it broke me it broke me a little bit like it, like i would the ending of this book just tore open my heart and it makes sense for the series to end this way but like wow it just packed such an emotional punch 
um i like again like i cannot speak highly enough about this series it's literally one of my all-time favorites i will never shut up about it and i just think that it is so so well done so beautifully written and please please check it out if you are even a smidgen interested Next up, we have A Court of Mist and Fury, the sequel to A Court of Thorns and Roses. I don't have the dust jacket because my dog ate it, so I'll be getting a new dust jacket because, of course, this is one of my favorite books ever. I mean, this reread, it just still packs the same emotional punch. Love this story forever and ever, and we have done a whole live show. I will be posting another vlog the same side that I did for Avatar, so please be on the lookout for that. It will be coming soon. I just haven't posted it yet, um, and that will be, like, very very in-depth about a review of this book but yeah like just one of the most beautiful journeys of healing ever and trash for the series just ugh, perfection the next book that i read is the princess ballad by jane and eve and tate james in this we are set in like a post-apocalyptic world where monarchies now rule the remaining land violet is an off is an orphan who's been shuffled from foster home to foster home and when she one day is informed that she has won the so-called princess ballot or a scholarship that is run every five years where random draw where someone gets to attend the prestigious Arvin Academy where basically the richest people and the royals of the world attend and once she gets there she thinks she can just focus on her education and bettering her life with this life-changing opportunity but it's more dark intrigue and politics and this whole crazy world that she's completely drawn into and in of course she immediately catches the attention of Prince Alex and Prince Rafe and they are like the two most powerful heirs in the world and things ensue from there. So I ended up giving this book two stars, but like it was kind of hard to rate because like I knew going into this book that it like wasn't going to be well written or like wowing me or anything like that, but I was still thoroughly entertained and entertained enough to pick up the next one. And I am reading the next one now. I will probably pick up the final one like eventually, just to, like read it quick, just to see like what happens at the end of the trilogy because now I've already read two books. And like it was honestly just like funny in some regards some of the co quotes were just like great it is a new adult book so it is a little bit on the raunchier side and i don't know i just thought it was fun and entertaining like nothing mind-blowing like it it was just funny kind of in how cringy and how cheesy it was sometimes but i enjoyed it and that's all i have to say and finally we have one last book to talk about today and if you have a harry potter sized hole in your heart because jk rowling is a turf this is the perfect replacement book for that middle grade fantasy series that you have been looking for and that is Keepers of the Lost City by Shannon Messenger. I read this book in like a day. I'm obsessed with this series. I already have the next three volumes here with me so that I can read them ASAP because I love it. I'm obsessed. I'm going home for Christmas. I'm probably going to like binge the rest of the series while I'm there. and. Like this is just like a very comforting book to read because it's middle grade, it, it reads very easily, but like it is relatable to all age levels. So on Keepers of the Lost City, we follow Sophie. She doesn't quite fit in in normal everyday life because she can read minds, but no one else around her like seems to know about it or like no one knows that she can do it. So she kind of just like lives life trying to hide this ability until one day this boy named Fitz encounter Sophie in a museum and says that he can also read minds as well and he brings her to this land and it turns out that she is actually an elf and so she kind of has to leave everything behind that she has ever known and go and join Firefox Academy in the elven lands. And what, why it's called the Keepers of the Lost City is because like the elves live in all like the cities that have been lost to time like Atlantis and Shangri-La and all these cities of like myths and legends and another fact that i thought was really cool is that like the magic system is explained by saying that like humans actually have an incorrect incorrect perception of reality and like all these like powers and abilities and stuff that they have it can be like explained by like the elven rules of like how reality actually works so i thought that that was really clever and cool and i don't know this book just really <laughs> it like stirred some emotions deep within me Oh, so I give this five stars, by the way. So we really feel for Sophie um, because she has to kind of give up her family and, like, those are people that she loves, but she, like, doesn't want to bring harm to them anymore or put them in danger. So 
she has to give up her family and kind of like move to this place where she doesn't fit in at all because she has not been raised as an elf and she doesn't fit in and she's like trying to find friends and find family and I think it's like a book on found family but also finding, finding your inner strength and like just everything about it. I love the mystical setting. I loved the friendships. It was so adorable and the family storylines in this book got the tear ducts going like ah. Uh, uh, it was so good. So yeah, I I can't recommend it enough. Like, and this is actually going to probably start me on a middle grade kick because I feel like I need this kind of like happy, light, whimsical energy in my life from now on. And with that, those are all the books that I read this fall. I mean, for the past like three, remember, I don't remember four months. Like it, it's a decent stack. So I'm not upset with myself. Yeah. So let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts are. And have some fun. Read some books. Catch you guys in the next one.